Get your toes tapping on this Monday. Coming up Friday, you can step back in time as coast musicians recreate the sounds of the Allman Brothers. But these aren't just any musicians. They have an interesting connection to the band. And here to tell us more, Oregon blues legend Wayne Sharp and legendary musician songwriter Jackie Avery. Thanks for coming in with us. And you know, you've got this show coming up on Friday. But each of you have that special connection. So you can really tell the story of the Allman Brothers <coughs> through your music on Friday. Well, I hope so. We're going to do our best to do it. Uh, J-Mo and Jackie and I go back to the late 60s here on the coast and we kind of all were pursuing the same dreams and stuff at the time trying to make it as players and uh, and time the clock kept ticking time keeps going you know and and so the guys have kind of passed on and J-Mo had come home recently for the bicentennial and we were discussing you know the fact that they're, they're legendary they've been 49 years of Allman Brothers you know music and uh, we were just, I said, well, how would you feel, because uh, he always pressed me to be Wayne Sharp and do my thing. I said, how would you feel if I did a show? I mean, I kind of looked like the guy and I played the same instrument and I loved the music. And uh, he said, well, the only thing that would upset me, Wayne, is if you didn't do it. Okay. And uh, he says, you're the only cat qualified. Right, and uh, you're going to give it a shot. And so I'm going to give it a shot, yeah. man. Uh, I've done it before. Uh, it's, it's not totally new. I do have an, a career on my own and stuff in the blues. Uh, I, I did fairly well, I'm happy to say. And, but we met uh, through Jackie back then, and, and uh, if I could give some, throw some credit towards my friend sitting next to me here, uh, there wouldn't have been an Allman Brothers band without Jackie Avery. Yeah, you uh, were telling me that uh, they were basically born in Muscle Shoals at the legendary music studio, and yeah. it was all thanks to you. You actually brought them together. Yes, uh, I met Dwayne. Jay and I were already living together in Macon, and uh, Southern Rock was coming. Didn't know it, but uh, I told Jay, man, go play with Dwayne. And so he did. I said, listen to it, man. The guy can play. You'd have to listen to Jay tell it. Yeah. And what was yeah. your first impressions when you heard them together for that first time? What was that like? It was just awesome. They, they came, they came, when they got back, it was just the two of them for about a month, then another month, and they had all five of them together. They'd stop here and pick up a guy, stop here and pick up, and they all end up in Macon. And then we heard them, and they would play every night. It was great. I mean, we just knew it was going to be something. And it took off from there, it really did. Southern Rock, <laughs> did, Southern Rock did completely. Then came Leonard Skinner and Marshall Tucker and all the rest of them. Macon was full of music. Gotcha. And so, we were there. So this Friday night at the Mary C in Ocean Springs, you'll be performing a tribute band, tribute to the Allman Brothers. What can people expect to see? Well, I, I never use the tribute word because it almost throws it into the the uh, you know just the band getting up and playing the songs I kind of felt like I was going to try to recreate uh, a typical concert at one of the better known venues that were two the Fillmore East the Fillmore West the Allman Brothers had probably the biggest selling live album in history still number one in Billboard still number one with Rolling Stone as a best live album and I thought you know an evening at the Fillmore would be a great concept and and it's a live show uh, it would be a live recording. It's a live recording that we'd be replicating. But we went and got, we, we bought the wardrobe, we bought vintage gear, we've got everything. It's going to be a step back in time for real. And we are looking forward to it. You see it there on the screen coming up 8 o'clock on Friday night. That will be the place to be. And you, you've talked a little bit about it, but why do you feel like you are the person that can connect so closely <laughs> to the Allman Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> well, for one thing, I love the music. The other, Greg and I are very close in age. We both had very similar histories. We, we were young white guys in a 60s South, and uh, the music was bigger than all of the politics. And we both were chasing the R&B and the rhythm and blues and music with passion. To make our living, we were doing the, the pop stuff, the bubble gum, and uh, I did it right here on the coast, you know, six nights a week in a house band. But we all wanted, you know, we we're artists first, you know, making a living at it is a different beast. But. Uh, I just feel like uh, I've been involved. I, I moved to Macon right behind J-Mo, uh, stayed with Jackie. I've worked you know, with all the guys, played with all the guys. I know the music backwards, forward, and I've been on the road with them many times. Uh, 
So I just feel like, uh, to quote JMO, I'm the only guy qualified, which is a little <laughs> bit overblown for me, but I'm sure there's a lot of, a lot of guys that could, that could do the music as maybe not uh, from the same bass that I come from. Mm -hmm. I had played with JMO before he was an Almond brother. Right. Uh, and, uh, and knew Jackie before JMO was an Almond brother as well. Gotcha, and so you're gonna take it and run with it. Well, best of luck to you on this Friday night. Thank, Thank you, you, appreciate it. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you.